All right, everybody. Hello and welcome to another feature film breakdown. We got a special one today. I don't think we have done a Roger Deakins film on the YouTube version of these breakdowns. And I have looked at every single one of Roger Deakins films uh, on the Patreon site. They are all up there. They are my favorites to look at. He is the inspiration for the framework. He is the look that, I, at least myself, that I am trying to achieve uh, in every single frame that I'm doing. I'm thinking about the influence of Roger and his ability to make, really, which is what we're looking at today, his ability to make something that is incredibly mundane and boring on the page just look phenomenal. And to be able to have the consistency to do it time and time again, it's not an accident, right? He is making very specific choices uh, about the way that he is going to approach something, and he you never see him painted into a corner where he can't get out of it, or he can't light his way out of it, or he can't frame his way out of it. Every decision uh, is putting him in the best possible position to be successful no matter what the location is or what the build is. And that's exactly what we're looking at in today's little snippet. If you want to see the entire breakdown of Blade Runner, you can go over to the Patreon site where you can find all of these breakdowns, uh, plus a whole lot more from the past there are hundreds of hours of breakdowns there. Find the link in the description below. So what the scene we're looking at today is it's just one person in a room sitting by themselves. And it's almost like a white walled room as well. It's like, okay, well, how do we create depth? And how do we make that interesting? And how do we cover it in a way that we can light it to have some shape? Because the last thing we want to do, and what you will never see in a Roger Deakins picture, is you will never see flatness, right? You will always see uh, that third dimension used and created with the lighting to make that roundness to uh, del deliver those layers that will make you feel involved in the picture, right? Coupled with the lens choices, coupled with the blocking, these are the things that uh, deliver that consistency over an entire picture. And nobody does it better than Roger. It is certainly not an accident. Uh, okay, with all that being said, let's have a look at uh, this little snippet from the breakdown of Blade Runner. Okay, well, let's just take a look at this. First of all, just look at the color that is inside of this room and then look at the levels, right? We got this thing out here, which is playing up in this region, but everything else, everything else, way, way, way down. And just first glance, what's the thing that sticks out the most for exposure? His face, right? And if we come in, let's see if we make this bigger. Oops, it's Blade Runner. Okay, what things are going on here? Well, corner of the room, always first thing that jumps out to me, corner of the room. Right? We've got depth with the window in the background, plus that little light back there, right? If you come up three inches, you know, you, you, you cut this in half now. You come up six inches, and this thing isn't completely gone. So, again, even if you know all of the elements of the framework, if you're not there on set paying very specific attention to this stuff, which is why Roger likes to operate so much, these little tiny incremental shifts, uh, it just makes such a big difference in the composition, which is the power of the frame, right? You're dictating what people see. Any micro movements in there it has such a big impact. Other thing, leading line, look at this thing, right to where we want you to look, okay? In terms of the light, the fall off over this thing, you can feel the light at every level falling off. It's so soft, but there's a big difference. Like this is a hard scene to light, right? Because it's essentially a white walled room with this big ass machine in the middle of it. Uh, and it's a fairly long scene. I think this goes for a few minutes here. We're just him looking inside of this machine, right? On the page, it reads very blandly, very boring. It's like, okay, guy sitting in that machine talking to his imaginary girlfriend. What are we going to do? Well, number one, take a look at the shape in the background, right? Uh, just keeping level as much as we can off that wall. But it's not about making it black. It's not about trying to make it dark just for dark sake. We're trying to draw attention here. So we don't want to take this away and looking at this stuff for hours and hours and all of the scenes in all of the frames in all of the movies you know people harp on uh, with the the one constant negative feedback on people that don't understand what i'm talking about when i mention the framework is that it's too formulaic that it can make shots repetitive but in, in fact it's the exact opposite because it's a jumping off point if you tick off all of the boxes, everything else in every single movie, in every scene in the movie, in every location with all the different costumes, it's always going to look different, right? You can play the colors in a million different directions. So you can do, you can start the same way and fast forward through all of those choices. So at the end, those little one or two inches that do make a difference, like in booming up or booming down or panning left or panning right, those little decisions, well, now your, your mind is clear to those because you've checked off everything else, right? You've already done the work that you can do offset which is the framework, which is understanding what are my core principles for making this thing look halfway decent. 
Uh, and after that, then it, it frees you up. But this, how, how else are you going to light the scene? I mean, this, I'm thinking of Sicario in the interrogation scene. He does a bunch of stuff exactly like this. And it always feels a little bit different, but it always feels so balanced. And here, what I'm talking about for background balance, there is nobody, uh, it doesn't matter if you don't like Roger's style of cinematography or his camera work, uh, his lighting, you, there's no one that balances the ratios better. There's no one. So that is a trained skill. Everyone should be able to get that good, but then you have to have the taste as well, <laughs> which is the hard part to get, right? Can We can't get the taste, but the skill of saying, okay, how do I get this back here? This is the room tone, right? How do I get this room tone to just the right level? Not so much that it's dark and doesn't make any sense, but that there's just enough light so it doesn't distract from Ryan Gosling's face. Then the other big thing, right? which is key to making an overhead shot like this look halfway decent, is where is the shadow on his face? Right? The, the light is up here, but we know that we can't just have top light or there's gonna be no shape. We need shape, we need shadow towards the camera. So the top light really sort of ends, you know, if you're talking about his head, it's gotta land somewhere in here, right? Because you don't want it spreading on that side of the cheek because this is our line running right through his face, right? Coming right out of the forehead running right this way. This is the line that the camera's gonna stay on for this whole scene, this side of the room. So we want the shadow to that side, but we want the top light look because that's what this room is giving us, right? This whole um, little police area, this station is all top lit, right? So we gotta keep in the theme of it, but how are we gonna make it look halfway decent? So, okay. Number one, even though we're going top light, it's top light pushed away, so back that way towards the back of the room and away that way, left of the line. Okay, very, very important because that little micro movement gives us this shadow to camera, shadow, shadow, shadow to camera. Look at how soft the shadows are, right? It feels like there is a, you know, a six by six right here, right outside the frame. And this is the credit card shot, right? We're over the shoulder with some layers and this is why I constantly repeat these things. Because in your mind, if I say credit card shot and you are a veteran listener of the podcast or you're a veteran Patreon supporter and you have seen these breakdowns a thousand times, it still helps because now I should instantly say credit card shot and you in your head should have the five solutions that you know you need to get to. Now, why is that beneficial to have those five solutions? Because boom, you already know who to tell, what to do, what equipment we're gonna need, what we don't need, more importantly, what's gonna be important to remember as we're watching through the frame when there's 10,000 different things going on on set. And you're like, what do I have to focus on to make this thing actually look good? What's for lunch? Who am I? Who's this person at the camera? Am I operating? Any of this stuff, you gotta just, there's so much shit going on on set. So the more, rather than, you know, we're trying to skip ahead in time. <laughs> that is essentially, the whole reason for the Patreon group and the podcast in general, trying to skip time. Like uh, you could fumble your way around set and not know any of the stuff and eventually you would pick it up or you can just listen to me tell it to you because I went through that process of just stumbling around. So this is what I have found works for me. Now it may not work for you. Um, I haven't found anybody that it doesn't work for yet, but there are, I mean, you know, exceptions to every rule. So credit card shot, just over the top with the light, super, super soft, but even things like floor, the color, keeping it all the same palette. Those are those details where if you don't have to worry about, oh, what are we, how are we actually gonna light this thing? In pre-production, you already have that down. Well, now you and James can go around and say, uh, for this overshot, what's the floor color gonna be? Is that gonna match with the color that we're doing up here? Does it make sense? What about here, the reflective quality? You can actually see the diffusion inside of the reflection from over here, but really, really simple. And that's one of the things you watch when you watch uh, Roger Deakins movie is it's really hard to um, appreciate the simplicity of the coverage and of the shots, but it's all based around the lighting, right? And I don't know how he does it, whether he does the blocking and the lighting, but it always is just in the perfect spot, right? Again, here, let's see if it goes to his face. Right there, look at the lighting, right? This is supposed to be overhead toppy lighting, but it's coming from the side and we have all of this shadow, right? Corner, why? Because lines are cool. Line back here, with a little bit of light coming over the top. Like, again, the only reason it seems really repetitive when we're looking at Roger Deacon stuff is because the framework is designed around Roger Deacon stuff. So every shot is going to have that component. <laughs> you know, it's not like, uh, 
Yeah, he he is the his vision is the framework. So it's going to be in every single shot. So this shows you how you can get the differences even amongst all the different scenes, okay? That doesn't matter what movie you look at, doesn't matter if this is uh, a Coen Brothers movie and you know he's out in the middle of the desert, all of these things are still gonna be in there. You just have to find them. Layers, right, foreground, this little up looking shot with the light coming this way, just this thing leading you right to his eyes again as well. And let's go to the next one, okay? Close up, you're not gonna get much there. He's gonna start looking at, even there, man, that's just a good, that's a soft, soft shadow, but softness. Now this is something that this is really is the modern look for cinematography is contained softness. So the hard part about softness is it's going to go everywhere. This top light. Uh, yeah, you can make it hard to keep it contained, or you can make it soft and let it go everywhere. Once as soon as you make it soft, you can't just make the light soft and then be like, okay, we're ready to shoot. You have to do the next three steps, which is the neg. Uh, the shape of the light, the exact position of the light, all of those steps, you just can't solve it with, you know, let's make the light quality a little bit softer. Now you see it here in the side on shot profile. Oof, there you go. I mean, this looks like Fight Club, you know, nothing but light down that side, dark right in the middle. Really, I mean, look at how much the flatness jumps out at you, right? Lots and lots of depth here. And boosh, flat, perfectly flat. He's gonna get the machine cranked up. Even the light, <laughs> even the direction of the light on his face. You know, you're, you're not getting any spill. You don't tell Ryan Gosling to move his head this way. We want that shape on the near side of the camera. And then here, eliminating all that shitty fill, all this fill that would be in here from this top light that we had before. Look at how dark the background is. Does he lower the lights somewhere? Did I miss that? Do you hear the lights? I mean, it's a little bit dark back there, but in this one, where's the wide? I mean, that's light back there, right? Light and light. I'm looking at these points in the wall. Then when we come around to here, where is it? Dark. I mean, that's fucking really, that's significantly darker. But man, and you can also feel there's a heavy, heavy grade on here, right? There's a lot of windowing to bring that up. And, and a lot of offset too, to lower everything around. So we go to the VFX bits, da da da. Why isn't that working? And I'll cut to, you see the same thing on her face. I mean, this is, again, look at how powerful that grade is, that window of the grade, because it's really, really difficult, like nigh impossible to have that level of softness and that level of darkness, right? Like this feels cooked from the grade. Um, but still, you have to place the right in the lights in the right spot to be able to get that level of cookness. And her light's looking good too. Again, simple. No camera movement, no nothing, just plonk. This is the best shot in the room. This is exactly what we need to see. We got the depth, the layers of those two together with the subject, the shit coming out of this machine. And worse. Okay, so <laughs> this is one of those things where continuity does not matter. Right? She sticks her hand out, puts a little pony on there, and now we've got the light coming this way over the top. Right? Still the shadow to camera. So just ever so slightly change the angle, but we're still gonna keep that toppy direction. And we go in, da da da, and still shadow. Like this is something that you have to, you gotta walk this all the way through with the director. Like, okay, we're gonna stay on this side, we want the action to play out this way. He's got to look this side of the camera when you do this. It's not just the lighting, it's communicating with everybody. And, and this is as boring a scene as you could possibly get. It's just a dude sitting there. Again, even closer. And we're out wider, same. Same, same ideas that we've been talking about. Even a little tiny bit of foreground there, just to make it interesting. And I think that's it. All right, that is going to do it for this little look. I told you it was good. I mean, could you come up with a more boring scene than that to analyze from a cinematography point of view? Probably not, right? You couldn't have somebody doing less actual movement or less back and forth or less angles inside of a room. But all of those decisions, basically where to place the light relative to the talent and then where the camera goes, those are the things that make the difference. And if you can understand it here, 
which is why I like looking at these basic scenes, right? It's like one thing to look at, I don't know, like a James Bond film where you have all the flash and all the explosions and you can have different camera angles and you look at the action sequences. That's important. But the majority of the time, the stuff that I am doing is trying to make something that's pretty boring look as interesting as it can and as compelling as it can. And to get that polish in a boring scene, if you can do that, all you have to do is scale it up and it's not that difficult, right? Especially as your career scales up, what ends up happening is you work with people that are better and better at whatever scale you're working at. So you take those same concepts and you don't have to know the name of the lights. You don't have to know uh, what kind of lift you're going to need or what kind of knuckle boom you're going to need. You don't have to know any of that kind of stuff. You just say, this is the mood that I'm going to create. These are the things that I know that I need in order to create that mood. Let's build it out. And you talk to the team around you. And this is the kind of instruction that you're giving to those around you so that they can do their job. You don't want to micromanage people just like you don't want to be micromanaged. So you give them an option. You give them a little bit of leash and you see what they come back with. And always working to this idea of if I can knock off these core concepts and if I can think in the framework and I can knock off, this is going to be important because this will actually make a noticeable difference in the final image. I want to take care of that now. Once you get those things ticked off, that frees you up on set to be looking for these little things that are going to add up to big differences in the final outcome. So again, if you want to see the entire breakdown, uh, go to the Patreon page. If you want to see all of the back catalog and all of the future stuff that happens each and every week, you get a brand new breakdown. Uh, I appreciate it. Visit the link in the description and support the podcast and the YouTube. Uh, okay, that is going to do it for this one. We will see you in the next one. Goodbye.